Hi, I'm Hyun Jeon, a second year PhD student from Seoul National University. Today, I will present our paper, CLAMS, a cluster ambiguity measure for estimating perceptual variability in visual clustering, which is a collaborative effort between Seoul National University, University of North Carolina Chapel Hill, University of Utah, and UNIST. Gulam Julani Kodli and I equally contributed to the work, and the co-authors are Hyunuk Lee, Paul Lawson, Daniel Ivor Sapir, and Jin Uk So. Before we start, I would like to ask one question. How many clusters are in this scatterplot? You may say that there are two clusters. Now, see this scatterplot. How many clusters are there? This time, you may be confused. Maybe there are four clusters, or five, or six. We actually conducted a study on this. We asked participants to perform visual clustering on the scatterplots and notified that the answer varied a lot in the second scatterplot compared to the first one. In other words, we can say that the first scatterplot shows a clear cl cluster structure, while the second scatterplot has an ambiguous structure. And another finding here is that people are all different. Even with the same scatterplot, the way of perceiving the structure varies by person. Moreover, such variability truly differs by scatterplot. We call this concept ambiguity. Ambiguity of visualization denotes the possibility of variability in conducting visual analysis using the visualizations. Here, we claim that ambiguity can be a threat in visual analytics. Think of a situation in which multiple analysis perceive a visualization in different ways due to ambiguity. As an analysis will raise different opinions, we can hardly accept one of them. Also, conflicts can occur between analysis with different opinions. Such conflicts can lead to additional cause in reaching an agreement on a final conclusion. Now, we may raise a question. Can you prevent potential issues caused by ambiguity? Or can you optimize visualizations to reduce ambiguity? Here, we may ask, can you predict or estimate ambiguity? In this research, we answer this question by constraining our concentration to the ambiguity in the visual clustering task in monochrome scatterplots, which we call cluster ambiguity. The way of estimating ground truth cluster ambiguity is simple. As cluster ambiguity refers to human perceptions potential variability in visual clustering, we can estimate it by conducting a user study. By asking people to conduct visual clustering and check the inconsistency, we can obtain ground truth cluster ambiguity. However, this strategy is inefficient and not scalable. We need a lot of money and time to recruit participants and conduct the study. Thus, we developed an automatic solution, which we call CLAMS. So what's the difference between CLAMS and the manual solution? The biggest difference is the time in which human resource is used. The manual method uses human resources in test time. It obviously needs a lot of resources and is also not scalable. On the other hand, CLAMS uses human resources in training time. Instead of using real humans to test individual visualizations, we construct a virtual human and reuse it repeatedly. This makes the estimation of cluster ambiguity to be more scalable and efficient. Now, let's detail how CLAMS works in real. After CLAMS receives a monochrome scatterplot as an input, it first decomposes the scatterplots using the Gaussian mixture model. Then, the system computes the separability between the Gaussian components in pairwise manner. At last, pairwise separability scores are converted into pairwise ambiguity, and these ambiguities are averaged to generate final cluster ambiguity. At this moment, you may have a question about the detailed procedure. For example, how can you estimate the separability between the Gaussian components? To do so, we use the CLOSTME dataset, which consists of 1,000 scatterplots, each again consisting of two random Gaussian components. The human judged separability is labeled to each scatterplot. This, sc this score is constructed by asking 34 participants whether each scatterplot consists of one or two clusters. The ratio of the participants who reported two clusters becomes a separability score. If every participant said that there is one cluster, the separability score is zero. If half of the participants reported so, the score is 0 0.5. The next question will be about converting separability scores to ambiguity scores. Actually, this process is closely related to the procedure of obtaining separability scores. If every participant said there are two clusters, the scatterplot clearly has two. If everyone said that there is one cluster, the scatterplot clearly has one cluster. 
Now, what if half of the participants said there is one cluster and another half said there are two clusters? This means that the variability in the perceiving cluster patterns is at the maximum level. Following such intuition, we designed a function that maps maximum ambiguity when the separability approaches 0 0.5. So you may be curious about the performance of clamps. To evaluate clamps, we first construct a ground truth cluster ambiguity ranking of scatterplots. This is done by human experiment. As we discussed earlier, we asked participants to perform visual clustering and then evaluate the variability of the clustering results. Then we check how well clamps estimates the ranking comparing the algorithm against automatic clustering algorithms and human annotators. Of course, CLAMPS outperformed clustering algorithms in capturing cluster ambiguity. The interesting thing here is that CLAMPS also outperformed more than half of the human annotators. Still, CLAMPS failed to outperform all participants, raising the necessity of further improving CLAMPS. Now, we would like to discuss whether CLAMPS is useful or not. We will show an application using CLAMPS to optimize dimensionality reduction. Dimensionality reduction, or DIR, denotes techniques that summarize high-dimensional data within two-dimensional space, so the resulting embeddings can be visualized using scatterplots. The typical workflow of using dimensional reduction is like this. Prepare the algorithm, put the high-dimensional data into the algorithm, and see the results. A smarter way to use DIR is to optimize the hyperparameter to find the embedding with the best accuracy. This is usually done by repeating the accuracy evaluation and hyperparameter update using an optimization technique like Bayesian optimization. Now, our idea is to add cluster ambiguity computed by clamps to the loss function. By this, we can obtain embeddings that sacrifice negligible accuracy to reduce cluster ambiguity substantially. The result is like this. The first law consists of embeddings optimized only based on accuracy, while the second law consists of the ones optimized using both accuracy and ambiguity. You can see that the second law shows a much clearer, clearer cluster structure while maintaining the overall shape of the scatterplot. The quantitative results also show that our application significantly reduces ambiguity while maintaining the level of accuracy. This is all it did. As a future work, we would like to extend the notion of cluster ambiguity into general visualizations. For example, we can check cluster ambiguity in a parallel coordinates plot. So thank you for watching the presentation. You can find additional information on the project page and can also enjoy the demo. We appreciate all reviewers, sponsors, and supporters who helped us shape this work. Thank you.